Today, we're not reviewing the four international menu items from McDonald's. We're making them, bitches. McDonald's. It's popular right now. Right now, in the planet where we are, it's popular to review these. I can't think of an easier job. I can't think of an easier YouTube channel than sitting in front of a camera and just eating some shit. Oh, hmm. I taste beef. There's cheese on this. I'm not sure I like the way it sits in the box. That's what's going on out there. I've watched some of these reviews. People should be ashamed of themselves. One guy reviewed the, the, the one with tomatoes, the chicken sandwich from Canada. He goes, you know, I'm not a fan of tomatoes, but I'll try and keep an open mind. This is the guy you want reviewing your f***ing food? This guy, what else does he hate? Mayonnaise? Steak? Cheese? What other issues does he have? that is bleeding through. Somehow he managed to say at the end, I'm very persuasive in getting you to try things. But that's not what we do here. We make shit. We make shit that you can make. And that's what we're doing today with these four examples of McDonald's new international menu items that have come to this country. And, and by this country, I mean the United States. So let's look at the lineup, shall we? And number one is the Grand McStream Bacon Burger. Mick Extreme. What is Mick it? Mick Extreme. You keep going McStreme. <laughs> and number one is the Grand Mick Extreme Bacon Burger. And this hails from Spain, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, look, people keep saying, there's nothing Spanish about it. I don't get it. There should be paquillo peppers and whatever, manchego cheese. Here's the thing. This is not meant to be a Spanish burger. This is merely... A McDonald's burger that's popular in Spain. That's it. Take the country out of it, really, other than the fact that it's popular there. So this one has what they call McBacon sauce, applewood smoked bacon, two slices of Gouda cheese, quarter pound burger, and more sauce on the bottom. I've had a few bites of another one. Should have stayed in Spain. Ours, you're going to like. Next from Canada is the tomato mozzarella chicken sandwich. There's two versions, crispy and grilled. We got the crispy one to taste because that's the one that I want to make. So you've got bun, you've got uh, what they call herb sauce, you've got lettuce, you've got a couple sad little slices of Roma tomatoes, you've got what they call creamy mozzarella. It was never creamy. Creamy would be spreadable. This is just flat mozzarella. Then you've got the chicken and more sauce below it. Again, this is another example of it's not the food from that country. It's just the food that's popular in that country. I'm from Canada. Nobody's walking around hailing this as our national food. Trust me, nobody. Ours, for sure, will be better. Next up are the cheesy bacon fries from Australia. Ready for this, Max? Cheesy bacon fries, and there they are. Look at that. They should be ashamed of themselves. Okay, now granted it's cold and it's sat here for maybe half an hour since it's been delivered, but come on. Cheesy bacon. It's like bacon was an afterthought. Hey, Larry, do you have any scraps of bacon left on the counter? Wait, who's that guy we make fun of? Alan. The Alan. Dick. Hey, Alan, you dick. Do you ha hey, Alan, do you have any scraps of bacon left over you can just shovel on top of this little sad pile of fries and cheese? And finally, the Stroop Waffle McFlurry from the Netherlands. There's caramel cookie pieces, caramel and vanilla ice cream. There's the pieces. There's the caramel. There you go. Cookie pieces, caramel, vanilla ice cream. And you can see there's a bunch of chunks in here. I had a bite, and I thought it was uh, sadly lacking. It just wasn't all that great. But apparently it's a worldwide favorite, so somewhere in the Netherlands, people are going f***ing ape shit for this thing. Give me that Stroop Waffle. <laughs> Give me that Stroop Waffle McFlurry. It may contain tree nuts, peanuts, or eggs. Or anything else, we're not sure what might fall in the vat when we're making mm -hmm. these things. All right, let's get busy, shall we? One of the components is thick cut applewood smoked bacon, and that's what I'm cooking here. Ah, you piece of sh. Turn these guys over, let them continue cooking while we start our 
Grand Muck Extreme Bacon Burger Sauce. So as far as I can tell, the sauce, the McBacon sauce for this burger is a, is a pretty straightforward kind of burger sauce that consists of three things, generally, mayo, ketchup, a little mustard for tang. I looked at it, there's like the tiniest little bits of pickle in it, so we'll put in some dill pickle. And then we're going to add one thing at the end to help with the smokiness of it. But I, I didn't unwrap the Japanese mayo that I use because people ask about it all the time. We'll put a link to it, but this is how it comes, QP mayonnaise. By the way, I am not endorsed by QP as much as I would like to be because I love the hell out of this shit. But people ask all the time, what is it, where do you get it? If you don't live where there's an Asian market of literally any kind, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, which all, which, which, which all carry this, uh, it's available on Amazon. And now Costco. Costco carries this now. One of our people on the subreddit took a picture and submitted That's it. where that, I had a quick look. That it's was like Costco. A palette of QP. Thank you. I like to think we had something to do with that. Wrong. So it comes in a, a bag. Take it out. Well, I'm showing you how to unwrap something. It's the QP unboxing video by Sam the Cooking Guy. This guy comes off. It goes back on. Now you've got the flip top. And we begin. So we'll put some mayo in here. I'm going to make a little more than we need because we'll also use it for the uh, the chicken thing with a, a small change to that too. So then a little ketchup. Oh, always. Can this sh not come out nice the first time? Thank you. Now the Coleman's. F***ing out. I have a cure. Stand by. And here's the answer. You ready? Powder Coleman's. I always keep as a backup, but I also use it if I'm making a rub and stuff like that. So it's very simple. A little bit goes in. You add a tiny bit of water to it. And with a little bit of water, we mix. And of course, I didn't put enough in. And it's too watery. So I'll add some more. It's probably going to be too much. Well, it's pretty good, actually. So, we'll just add a little bit of this. Then the pickle. So we've got a little bit of dill. Honestly, I saw the smallest flex. There may not be, it may be something else. I suppose it could be parsley or something like that, but it looked like the smallest little flex of what could be pickle. So, I'm gonna do this. And if it's not right, someone can kiss my ass because it'll still be delicious. How could a little dill ever be a bad thing? And in we go. Last but not least, to help with the smokiness, a little liquid smoke. It's basically liquid campfire. Y you smell this? You're sitting beside a campfire. Someone's just made you a cocktail and poured it through burnt campfire wood. It's, it's unbelievable. But, 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 it's very strong. It's very concentrated. So just the tiniest bit. And by tiny bit, I mean like... Uh, uh, I'm so scared of let's get ush. Oh, that's too much. Honestly, that's too, do you see that? That is too much. That would absolutely ruin this. So that's how much I want. What is that? Sixteenth of a teaspoon? Anyway, we'll put this in and we'll mix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we taste. It's pretty good. Smoky, just like the McBacon sauce. I mean, you don't really know what it is. You can go online and you look up the ingredients, but by the time you get through the phosphate 2819 and the xanthan gum and the sh that you can't pronounce, you got to try and decipher. And that's, I'm not a food scientist, if that wasn't obvious. Okay, sauce, a uh, bacon. You can stay there, Max. Our bacon's ready. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Dang it. I love beautiful bacon. The um, grand... Muck Extreme Bacon Burger gets two pieces. I made four because, well, why the hell not? Cut a little white onion. And we need some for this and the Canadian chicken sandwich. So I'll cut extra. Perfect. We have to get our Gouda cheese ready. And here's the problem I have. It's square. 
I can't find square Gouda cheese. I found round and I found this. And I thought this guy would be easiest to deal with. But then I realized now I've got this wedge. So here's what we'll do. We'll cut these outside pieces off. And we'll peel it. This is about the right size. So if I cut here, I can probably get two pieces this way is what I need. I don't have anything better to do this with. So if you start yelling at your screens now, I'm not going to hear you and it won't matter anyways. God, just be careful. I am. I just don't want to f*** it up. Okay, we're going to be fine. And I'll cut the other one off of this side. I wish I had a slicer. That's what I wish I had. But I don't. So I can't complain about... Uh, uh. There we go. Two square pieces. The sauce is ready. The cheese is cut. The onions are sliced. The bacon is done. We're missing the burger. Let's go. So this, this is a half pound of 80-20 ground beef. 80-20 means 80% lean, 20% fat. The guy at the store today said, do you want 80-20 uh, or 90-10? And I said, I would take 75-25 if you had it because more fat is just more flavor. You know the drill. We have the shirt. So this is a half pound. So I just really need like half of this. I could shape it by hand, but I thought I'd use this little guy because because why not? Because it's fun. So the Grand Mick Extreme. By the way, isn't something that's got extreme in it, shouldn't it be bigger than a quarter pound? You know what? There's an edge here. I need to push it out the bottom one. Piece of s***. I mean, I don't know what's extreme about this. I mean, this... In Spain, their food is amazing. This can hardly be extreme there. Okay, but we're ready for this. Give it a touch of oil. A little salt and pepper. Same thing on the back side. And down she goes on the Evo. And we're not cooking for a long time. We're cooking for a good time because we do not want this thing to be overdone. You're going to be able to watch the color change up the side a little bit. And while it's cooking, we'll throw our buns on to get them a little color. And now we're ready to flip the burger and add our first piece of cheese. Beautiful. Beautiful. And we're ready to build. Here's how we start. Bottom bun and some of our McBacon sauce. Oh, look it. I'm spreading it out nicely. Not just in one two inch space like McDonald's. And now our second piece of cheese goes on. And now the top burger with the cheese. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And now the bacon, two pieces that we'll cut in half because that's what they did. I don't know how they had them. We'll go like this. That's ridiculous. Let's go like this. There's no right or wrong here, that's for sure. And then the top bun with more of our McBacon sauce. Again, not being cheap. And last but not least, a little bit of this white onion that we, that we cut up really beautifully. So we'll throw it on here on the bun. Most of it will stick like that. And we go on top. I gotta say, it's pretty f***ing good to me, man. And now we should have a bite, but before we do, let's just look. Mine, theirs. Mine, theirs, mine, theirs. Yes, mine just came off the grill. Yes, it looks fresher. But still, I don't know. There's just something about it. But it's from a fast food place that makes a billion burgers, so what are you going to do? Let's try it, though, shall we? Let's. But looks certainly damn good. Sauce everywhere. Bacon's really good. 
the extra smokiness of this. It's a nice thing. You like that. Good is it's good. It's not my favorite cheese for a burger, but it's good. It doesn't come from Spain, but and it's drippy. It's drippy because there's lots of sauce in here. The cheese is melting and the, the burger. I don't know if you can still see. There's a little tiny bit of pink in here, and that's kind of where you want to cook your burger to, unless you're one of those people that freak out every time I cut open a steak and there's some red. So we all have choices, people. Eat the food the way you want. Just don't make the same thing all the time. And my vote for at least this one is our version versus their version. But this is one of four. One of four. Next up, the tomato, what the hell is it called? The tomato mozzarella shit. Nobody move. Next up is the is the tomato mozzarella grilled chicken sandwich from We'll start by making a little piece of chicken. And here she is. I mean, it's okay looking. Chicken crispy. Uh, it's a bit bleak, I think, but, but we can do better. We will follow the rules, though. And you remember, I made a little bit extra of the sauce to go in the... Uh, in the, uh, in the, the Grand Mook Extreme... Bacon burger. Hashtag nothing extreme about it. And so this has what they call an herb sauce. And I've tasted it. And to me, it tastes like they've added basil to it. Which, thinking that there's Roma tomatoes, mozzarella cheese, you're not far off from putting together a, a what's it called? A caprese salad, right? With those pieces. So basil would work. Or a margarita pizza. Right? Tomatoes, cheese, basil. So we need basil. I could buy fresh basil and chop it up and put it in. Oh. That was a, a <laughs> butterfly. <laughs> I just saw a thing winging at me. I didn't know what it was. So I'm saying I could have just bought fresh basil and chopped it up. But it's going in here. Is it going to incorporate well? I didn't think it would, so I bought this. Let's hear. That is this. Basil stir in paste. It's, it's basil that's been turned into a paste. Look how easy this is going to be. Take this little lid off. So I've got probably a quarter cup of this sauce from before. Let's try a, a teaspoon of the paste. Look at that gorgeous color. And we mix. And we taste. Tiny bit more. It's actually pretty darn good. And it's uh, pretty close in flavor to the sauce that I tasted in this guy. That stuff in there. All right. This is done. We need onions that we already sliced. We need some Roma tomato slices that we can do here. Here, this is interesting. Check this out. So, when we bought these today, we bought two of each so we could taste the one version and keep one version whole for pictures. So, this one has two pieces of Roma tomato. Clearly not from the same size Roma tomato. Somebody got the literally the short end of the stick here. But so, let's see, because I heard there was supposed to be three. And here's the one we've been eating. Ah! A third. Evidence of a third. Somebody f***ed up. Hey, McDonald's. That's not right. And this kills me about the sauce placement. Let's just say two square inches. Uh, nothing around the outside. Your first bite. If this is your first bite right there, you're getting no sauce. That makes me insane. All right. Let's cut these tomatoes. Done. Next thing is the chicken. So a crispy piece of chicken requires, in my world, two things. It needs to be uh, brined. That just means that this is sitting in a buttermilk mixture. I've pounded it relatively flat. And I've added pickle juice and sriracha to this for a little flavor kick. Next, 
It goes into seasoned flour, regular white flour, kosher salt, and pepper. I think there's going to be enough flavor coming from the sauce um, that I don't need to now add chili powder and stuff like that, which I like to do, but I don't think I need to do that for this. So our goal now is very simple. We take our chicken out of its little brine that it's been sitting in for about an hour and a half, let most of this drip off, and then straight into our flour. Boop. And now we cover completely. And in we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So now you're just cooking chicken. And look, generally you could use color as a guide, but if you want to be super certain, then get a good instant read thermometer and yank it when it's, you know, about 159, 160, it'll raise another five degrees while it rests. And just know, because the oil doesn't come all the way over the top of it, we're going to need to flip this guy you know, in about five minutes. All right, so we'll give him a little turn. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Oh, it's going to be good. Oh, it's going to be good. And we're there. So, out we come. Let the extra oil drip. Put it on here. We can put our mozzarella on. I mean, they use one piece. I like two. Just going to leave that now. Let's get our buns ready. Okay, a little extra color, but we're going to be fine. Now, here's how we start with some of this herb sauce. Next comes our chicken. It's hot. It's very hot. It's very hot. I didn't have to use just my fingers for that. The cheese is already on. We'll put the requisite three pieces of Roma tomato. McDonald's, that's here. Who's ever in the back, let me help you. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. That's how it's supposed to be. And then we get some lettuce, a couple pieces of lettuce to make this pretty. And then more sauce on the top bun, like that. Yeah, okay, got it a little dark. It's going to be fine. Look, I covered it up. And then last but not least, more of this thinly sliced white onion that sticks so beautifully for a little crunch and a little bite. And this guy goes on top. And there's your, there's your, your Canadian-based tomato mozzarella. What the hell is it called? <laughs> I can't... There's your Canadian-based tomato mozzarella chicken sandwich. And we did the crispy version because I wanted to. And now we are going to taste it. But as we did with the Grand Muck Extreme bacon burger, let's look at ours and theirs. Ours and theirs, ours and theirs. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Sam, you're a dick. You've hidden all the stuff on the inside. Well, let's revisit. There are the two tomatoes in their original position. Can't even shake them out. A little bit of sad lettuce. Yes, it's cold, but still. Which one do you want to eat? I ain't fucking that one. Let's go, Maxi. Just, just one look. Just one look before this happens. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's a freaking mess. Which, by the way, this sad little fellow would not have been because they didn't put enough sauce in. The chicken was kind of dry. That little herb thing is just like that. Make that little dressing, add the herb, what the, the, what's that called? Add the basil stir in paste. Never bought it before. Glad I have. Damn, that's good. The chicken's crispy, the mozzarella's nice and melty, 
The onions do give a little bit of a kick, and that sauce with the herb in there is pretty darn good. But wait, don't stop there. This is only two out of four. Next up, the cheesy bacon fries from Down Under. And here they are. Here's what we're shooting to be better than. <laughs> it's not going to be hard. You've already seen these. I mean, geez, McDonald's, please. That's it. This is it. Uh, look, I understand that all that this stuff was pre-weighed, you know? A certain amount of fries, a certain amount of cheese sauce, bacon, but for God's sakes, we can do better than this. We'll start by making, like, the world's easiest cheese sauce. The world's easiest. Come over here, Max. Let's take care of this. Okay, we're just cooking some bacon. Diced it up in the pan. It's going to be decent pieces, unlike our competition in that box. And here we go with the cheese sauce. We want three tablespoons of butter that, in my mind, looks like that. Once it's melted, we have the same amount of flour, three tablespoons, and we mix. Now, I'll take it off the heat because it was going to start getting too brown, and I didn't want that. The goal at this point is mix it until it's a smooth paste. And you've gotten rid of that raw flour taste. Wow, that's really hot, man. I better turn that down. And when it's there, I just can't put it down yet. Maybe move over for a second, Max. Just, just start right here for a second. So at this point, we'll give it about a cup of milk. That's about a half. And you're going to see what's going to happen. Now I can put this back on the heat. You're going to see this is going to start to thicken. But before it does, quickly, my bacon is right there on the edge, and I need to get it off. So I will. Onto a plate with paper. Beautiful. I'm happy to do this with my left hand because Max refuses to go on the other fing side of me. So if this looks all jacked up and the bacon's burning, it's not my fault, it's Max's. Okay, back to the cheese sauce, which you can see has now gotten all clumpy because I had to take the time to do the bacon backwards with my left hand because Max won't move. And a little more milk. And once this is beautifully incorporated and thickening up somewhat, we start to add our cheese. Oh boy. And here's what we've got. We're going to put a half a cup of Monterey Jack in and about a half a cup of sharp cheddar. And this will mix. Look, you can see how cheese saucy that is. Gorgeous, right? If it gets too thick on you, add a little bit more milk, but you should be fine. And then we add a couple things. About a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Maybe that's a quarter teaspoon. About a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. About the same of chipotle chili powder. And if you only have regular chili powder, Shame on you, because the chipotle is so much better, but you'll find that out one day on your own, and then you'll be sorry you didn't listen sooner. And then they'll hit a salt and pepper. And guess what? Our gorgeous cheese sauce is done. So we'll turn it to low, leave it sitting right here. I'll go grab my fries, and we're away to the races. Okay, so... I didn't need to make my own fries when we're doing all of this stuff, so I bought thin ones like McDonald's. But here's a tip. When you make store-bought fries out in the freezer and then you bake them, when they come out and they're still warm, just give them a little salt and pepper. I don't care what else you're doing. People eat fries plain, and you don't want somebody picking up a shitty fry that doesn't have any flavor to it. That's a nice, crisp fry with some seasoning. By itself, it's going to be great, but we'll make them greater. So, I'm going to put our fries in here. If I can do this. How's that stack look, Max? You good? Now, you ready for this biatch? Yep. You sure you're ready? Because I'm not sure you are.
Holy sh**. You should smell it from here. Just a tiny bit more. Like, you don't want to rob your guests. F you don't want to rob you. Remember? Cheesy bacon fries. Here comes the bacon, and my work here is done. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Don't forget to tip your server. Should I bring it a little closer for you, Maxie? And just like with the other two things we've made, what would you rather have? These or these? Hang on, that's not fair. You can't see it. You just put it on a bit of an angle. There you go. These or these? These or these? And look, I know there's a lot more of these than there is of these. And this cheese has been here last time. I just think if this is what they're doing, they've got to step up their game. They need a little bit more bacon. Maybe make the pieces a little more substantial. And it looks like you only got half an order. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, for f***'s sakes, get a smaller box or something. But screw it. This is what we want. We want one of these kids. So let's get some, shall we? Right here. Oh, this oh, is hot. Ow. All right. All right. Bacon, for sure, because there's lots. But the spice of the chili powder and the garlic powder and the cheese sauce, wow. Damn it. Is it good? Mm. So if you've learned anything with this, it's, you want this and maybe not this, but how to make an easy cheese sauce quick. That, by the way, you could put on freaking anything. That could go on some crazy-ass Benedict. Go on top of a burger. You could use it for nachos. But one more. It's dessert. It's that Kupfen waffle McFlurry from the Netherlands. You're going to like that. Or you're going to like my version. And finally, <clears throat> the McFlurry. The, mm-hmm, I got to get the name because, because the name is important. The, uh, it's the Stroopwafel McFlurry. It's from the Netherlands. They say it's vanilla ice cream, crispy caramel waffle cookie pieces, and a rich caramel swirl. I don't know what crispy caramel waffle cookie pieces are. So I'm going to help us get there in my head. So for the ice cream, I'm using Dolce de Leche, which, as you can see, is delicious vanilla ice cream with swirls of caramel through it. It's a cheat right off the bat, but a delicious one. This goes in here, along with the rest of the ingredients. Come on, fella. And by the way, the difference between good ice cream and shitty ice cream is a huge difference. So get something good. Next... A waffle cone thing. We'll put some of this in for texture. Maybe we'll hold a little back. Of course, we need some milk to thin it. Don't know how much yet. We might have to add more ice cream. I'm going to give it an extra shot of caramel because we can. On goes the lid. Goes on the base. And we go. This, this, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're talking. That's what we want. So let's do this. Let's give it some more cookie. And one more thing to help it along, and that will be a little Jack Daniels. And now we'll give it a little splash because whiskey and vanilla and waffle all go together brilliantly. Final mix. Out we come. Let's do this. Let's take a little bit more caramel and we'll rim our glass. And after adding a little bit more ice cream, I think we've we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. I think, as they say, we've done it. And here we are at the end. We have mine and 
We have theirs. I don't have their equipment, so this might be a push. They might win. Mine, theirs. Let's find out. So using the McFlurry spoon that has some of their caramel or ice cream or whatever in it, we'll taste this guy. A nice amount of sweetness, lovely caramel. And by the way, that little Jack Daniels did not freaking hurt. Yum. And now this one. It's crunchier. But it has been sitting in my freezer. Okay. I think if I could get mine in that condition, I'd like it more. But that might have won. I have to be honest. I think that guy won. What have we learned today? We've learned that reviewing food is a piece of cake. Making food is not. We've been here a long time. Are you ready to go home, Max? Mm -hmm. We're both ready to go home. We've only had one little spat. We still love each other. But the point is, you've learned some things that you can take away and make. And they'll be delicious. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for, for hitting the notification bell so you find out when we put up new stuff. And we're on the road to a million. And by the way... And by the way, we'll be in Japan the 23rd to the 29th of next month. And those of you that are there are already starting to reach out saying, hey, can we get together for a drink or something? And we're going to reach back out to you. Thank you for that. we been like six or seven so far. We could have a fun little, what's it called? Meetup. A little meetup. A Japan meetup. would be cool. All right. Thanks for watching. Go make something good. Please. <laughs>